Lesson 14, Assembling a Multi-Chapter Book In this lesson, we will learn the steps needed to create a multi-chapter book in InDesign from start to finish. An elegant and easy-to-read multi-chapter book is one of the most satisfying projects to create in InDesign. However, when working on a book, you often end up with many images and a lengthy document resulting in an enormous file size. Therefore, it is advisable to create separate files for the chapters. This is when the book panel becomes very useful. One of the first things you need to decide when working on a book is the page size. Of course, your client might predetermine this, but you will find numerous online resources if the decision is up to you. It is important to use standard book sizes if you want your project to print efficiently. There are standard press sheets paper sizes that match standard book sizes. If you deviate from standard sizes, your project may not print efficiently as a 16-page signature. In my example, I am using a 6x9 octavo page with a pleasing 1 to 1.5 aspect ratio, which gives me room to work. An InDesign book file is a collection of documents that can share styles, parent pages, and color swatches. The InDesign book file has a .indb file extension. To maximize the power of the InDesign book file feature, you must have at least two different InDesign documents in your book file. The book panel lets you keep all your files in sync and manages your InDesign files. When working on a book, it is best to design, organize, and format one of your complex chapters first, then use the chapter as a template for the rest of the chapters. Some people who work on books often, rather than working directly on a chapter, create a template document that includes all the paragraph, character, and object styles. Either method will ensure that the styling is consistent throughout the entire book. Before I go any further with my lecture here, I'm going to quickly show you how I set up my document and how I styled it. So I have my chapter one open, and this is the document I used as my style guide, naming, um, like I set all my paragraph, character, and object styles, as well as my parent pages, and I want the rest of the book look like this one. So um, here it is. So when I'm ready to create another chapter, I'm going to create a new document with the same size settings, and these were my margins. I don't have the primary text frame selected. So I'm going to hit Create. This is my new blank document. Before I go any further, I'm going to show you one quick settings I change in this document to accommodate a technique I use when importing text into a InDesign document. I'm going to go under InDesign, Preferences, and choose Type. And here I'm going to make sure that the Smart Text Free Flow is checked. I'm going to uncheck Limit to Primary Text Frames because I don't have any primary text frames. And then I'm also going to check Delete Empty Pages. I'll show you why this will become important, that InDesign will do something for us automatically. And hit OK. At this point, I am ready to import my text. I copied and pasted my text from Gutenberg project. I simply highlighted the text I wanted chapter by chapter and saved it into a rich text format document. So I'm going to go um, place. I'm using the keyboard shortcut Command D. I'm going to make sure that the show import options are opened. In, uh, in this case, I'm going to import chapter six. And these are the options. So one thing I wanted to show you, I would check remove styles and formatting from text and tables. In this case, it's not as important since it's a rich text file. But if you receive a document, which is a Microsoft Word or any other text editing document, likely the creator of that document have set some styles already, which we don't want to import into InDesign. We want to set our own styles. So I'm going to hit OK. And at this point, I'm going to have that, I call it the place gone. Uh, not entirely sure what the official name is. So before I 
click, I'm going to hold down Shift, and you can see my icon turns into this continuous squiggle line. And that means my text will flow from one page to another. All I need to do, I just need to click, and InDesign automatically inserted text boxes and flowed the text from first page to the last. I have a few more issues with this text. I'm going to turn on the show hidden characters to point out what the problem is. Oftentimes when you receive a document from someone else, or in this case from Gutenberg Project, I have forced line breaks everywhere. I don't want those. I want to control the spacing by adding, editing my paragraph styles. So one easy way to remove those is to use InDesign's Find and Change function. It's under Edit, File, Change. I already have it here under the Grab code, but you do not need to know the need the need to know the code. Uh, simply find um, end of paragraph, and that is the code. And all I did, I hit, I highlighted, copied, and pasted it. So I'm looking for that there are two line breaks. I wanted to change it to only one line break, and I want to search the entire document. And first, I'm going to hit Find Next. And it find it already. And I'm going to say, say Change All. In this case, InDesign find 54 instances of this double line break and going to replace it for me in a few clicks. And I'm done at this point. If you have other things, other formatting options you want to replace, this is a great time to do. All right, so at this point, I'm ready to load the styles that I established in my chapter one and also my parent page. Very simple. I'm going to go under paragraph styles, choose the fly out option, and choose load paragraph styles. This will bring out the window, and I'm going to locate my chapter one. In this case, whatever document you choose as your style source, you're going to choose that document and hit open. And uh, InDesign brings showing all the styles that are included in this document. I'm going to uncheck these two. Oh, sorry, just a basic paragraph. I'm going to uncheck since it's by default already came with my new document and hit OK. And this sets all my body text and title styles I established in my previous document, as well as my character style that is corresponding to this um, drop, drop cap. And I can do the same thing with the parent page. Choose the fly out option, go under parent pages, load parent pages, and I'll click on chapter one and it loaded it. So one more last thing to leave, uh, left is uh, load my object styles, exact same process, load object styles, locate the document as you want to use as your default or like template, hit open, and the only thing I need is the illustration frame, and hit OK. At this moment, I'm ready to format my document based on my paragraph styles, OK? Uh, because I know that most of my text is going to be a body, and that's what I use, the body, no indent. I'm going to click anywhere and hit Command or Control A to select all my text in the entire document. And I'm going to apply this body, no intent, no indent, sorry. And now I can change the other ones. So I, I'll just click inside chapter six, and that was my chapter number, and then the title, chapter title. The one thing left here is um, the body per first paragraph. And here we go. This document has some unneeded line breaks, but uh, just because of copying from Gutenberg project. So the one more last thing left is applying my parent page. So this document actually mainly has um, the parent pages that include a running header and including also a page number. So I'm going to just drag and drop 
those and uh, apply them. So as you can see, all my pages here now have uh, my running header and the page numbering. At this point, I'm ready to save this document and get back to assembling my book file. The first step in creating a book file is to format all your InDesign documents, such as the cover, title pages, table of contents, chapters, etc. The second step is to create a new book file. Then you'll go under File and choose New Book. You will get the Book dialog box. Give a name to your book file. After creating the book file, the book panel is empty. It is time to add your InDesign files to the book panel. The book panel is the working area to add, remove, and organize documents. There are a couple of ways to add content to your book file. Option 1. Click the plus sign at the bottom of the dialog. Option 2. Open the flyout option to add files to your book. When you place the chapter files into the book panel, InDesign will automatically renumber the pages. Instead of restarting at page one at each file, the page numbers continue from chapter to chapter. To reorder the documents inside the book panel, you can select any document and drag and drop it into a new stacking order, just like you would rearrange elements in the layers panel. To dedicate a file as a style source, click the box next to the document name. On the left, you will only see an icon next to your source file, not the rest of the files. The source file doesn't need to be the topmost file in the stacking order. We will talk more about the, what a source file is in a later part of the lecture. It is important to note that a book file is separate from document files. Therefore, when you choose the Save Book command, InDesign saves the changes to the book, not the documents in the book. To save the book, you can either open up the flyout menu or click the Save Book icon at the bottom of the book panel. You can save the book under the original name you entered when creating your book file or choose the Save Book As and give it a different name. You will complete both of these commands from the panel flyout options. When you save the book file, InDesign saves it as an INDT file. You find the close book command next to the save book and the save book as commands. The book panel is where you remove or replace documents from your book file. You can add or remove documents by either clicking on the plus and minus icons at the bottom of the book panel or opening up the flyout options. When you want to replace the document, select it, then choose Replace Document in the Book Panel menu. Next, locate the document you want to replace it with and click Open. Keep in mind, when you remove a document from the book file, it does not delete the file. The Book Panel allows you to keep all the files in sync. It manages all the InDesign files. This feature becomes very important when the book file you are working on has many chapters. You can find the synchronize options under the flyout menu. First, you need to select the source file from the book panel. This file will become the standard for all the styles you saved with the rest of the documents. You can synchronize your files without needing to open all of them separately. If a document is opened, InDesign will change it, but won't automatically save it. On the other hand, InDesign will open the closed documents, makes the changes, and save and close them. You can find the synchronize options under the flyout menu. Take a moment to look through all the options listed. By default, parent pages options is unchecked. However, you can synchronize them with the same method as the others. Synchronizing the parent pages is helpful if your document design includes repeating elements such as running headers or footers. 
If you plan to synchronize your parent pages, it is a good idea to synchronize all of the documents in your book at the beginning of the design process. If you decide to synchronize the parent pages, use only one source file for all of the documents in your book file. You can format how the pages are numbered in your book. In a book file, the numbering options are determined by the settings of each file. If you need to refresh your memory about page numbering, review what we'll discuss in Module 7 in Lesson 12 and 13. The page range appears next to each document name in the book panel. To change the page and numbering options for each document, select the document in the book panel, then open the flyout menu, choose the document numbering options, or double click the document's page numbers in the book panel. Specify the page section and chapter numbering options. Once you are happy with your choices, hit OK. In this example, I'm changing my title page's numbering options to Roman numerals. The rest of the document remains in the original settings without being affected. When you are working on a book file, ideally, each chapter will start on an odd numbered page. In the previous example, we changed the numbering options of individual documents. In this case, we need to make a global change to our book file to start each chapter on an odd numbered page. To do this, open up the flyout menu and choose book page numbering options. Select continue on next odd page or continue on next even page. In our case, we need to select continue on next odd page. We also want to add blank pages to accommodate this step. Hit OK. Look at the book panel and note that InDesign automatically updated all the page numbering and consider the added blank pages. Throughout this lecture, we learned much about why using the book panel is beneficial and time-saving. But of course, the same is true when we are ready to output our book file into a print or digital book. You can pre-flight, package, output for print or export the book file as an EPUB or PDF with a single command. If you want to output the entire book, ensure no individual document is selected in the book panel. To deselect the document, simply click in the book panel below your document list and in an empty area. Choose the desired output method from the book panel flyout menu. Before outputting our book file or handing it off to our provider, we should always pre-flight the document. You can pre-flight individual documents, such as this one. I have chapter one opened. So pre-flighting is the industry term for quality control and checking for errors. So if I want to check this one document, I would go under Window, Output, and choose the Pre-Flight option, which will open up the Pre-Flight panel. In here right now, it shows no error. So under the profile, there are a couple of default ones that InDesign by default includes, which one of them is the basic and the other one is digital. I created this one called Book. I'll show you how to create a profile. To create a profile, click this flyout option and click on Define Profiles. You can add or delete profiles by using the plus and minus signs. And in some instances, maybe your printer has a very specific pre-flight profile and requirement for your file, then they would provide you with a file and you would load that file to this panel by clicking here and choose Load Profile. So let's take a quick look what uh, is in this book. So the only thing I changed, I based it on the basic and I added to check for images and check for image resolution to make sure that my resolution is at least 250. So that's all. All right, so as I said, we can 
pre-flight individual documents, but the book panel allows you to do that all at once rather than having to go through every single document one by one. So to do that, we obviously gonna go to the book panel and open up our options here. And here I have the option to pre-flight the book. Then I, on the profile section, I have the same options such as I had in um, the profile options in the individual pre-flight. So I'm gonna choose book. And in this case, the scope, I'm going to choose entire book. And you can generate a report, but in this case, I'm going to click pre-flight. And InDesign went through all my documents this fast, and it looks like I have some errors in both the title page and Treasure Island. You can find out what that problem is by going to the document itself and then checking the pre panel for that particular document. And I can see that there are errors and my images, the image resolution, these two images inside my chapter one is not good enough. And I can do the same thing with the title page, going to the title page and check the same thing, open up the pre-flight panel. And again, I have a problem with an image. So it tells me to fix that. And then we can do this process again to double check until we no longer have the red dots next to the name of the document. Based on the previous pre-flight result, I went back and changed the resolution for the images in question. So let's perform the pre-flight again and see everything is good or I still need to fix stuff. I'm gonna go pre-flight book, choose entire book and use profile as my book preset and pre-flight and now everything is well and I got all green dots next to every single document inside my book panel. Now that we got the green light after pre-flighting our book file, we are ready to package the book file. We don't wanna package individual files, we want to package the entire book file. The way to do that, so first of all, let me select one document inside my book panel to show you something. If I have a document or multiple documents selected in my panel and I go out to my fly out option, I don't have the option to package my book. I have the option to package selected documents for print. That's not what I want. So I need to go back to my panel and deselect. And again, to deselect it, simply click anywhere in the empty area below the list of my documents. So once I deselect it and I go back here, now I have the option to package book for print. Once I did that, I'm getting my package dialog and it looks like everything is correct. All my links are there and they have the correct profile for my output, which in this case will be print and everything is ready. I'm gonna hit package and uh, you have the printing instructions. I'm not going to put anything else in here and hit continue. And uh, now InDesign is asking me where to put this document. I'm going to just put it inside the main folder and I'm gonna name it. And hit package. So InDesign is doing its thing. Now it's done. So let's take a look what it did and what, what happened to our file. So I saved it under here, lecture 14, Treasure Island. And this is the folder I created, Treasure Island for print. And I have the document front, I have the links and I have all the individual files. So you should only end up with one single main folder with the subfolders and the files included inside that folder to package the entire book, not individual documents. Now that we are done with 
pre-flighting and packaging our book file, we are ready to export it into a PDF. You going to perform this task also from the fly out option. Very simple, click on this and choose export book to PDF. Keep in mind if you have one or multiple files selected inside the book panel, that option is not available. Then that option becomes export selected document to PDF. So if that's the case, you need to come back and deselect by clicking into the empty area, then go back and choose export book to PDF. And then from the format, you, in this case, I'm going to choose print. I'm going to place this document, this PDF inside my package folder, name it. And hit save. That will bring up the export Adobe PDF options. I'm going to choose high quality print. And um, I'm going to export it as pages. Oftentimes when you try to export a PDF as spreads, there is a problem. So to make sure that uh, under the general, export as pages. Since I choose high quality print for my drop down menu, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be good with every single option. The only other thing I'm going to check is to view PDF after exporting. So let's take a look at it. I'm ready to do and hit export. InDesign is exporting my file, generating this PDF document. And as soon as it's done, it opens it up for me in Acrobat since I chose that option. So I'm going to look at this document, going to zoom out to 100% uh, so we can see what's happening. And here it is. Here is our document exported into a print quality PDF using the book panel that exported the entire book not only one document. We don't have to fuse it together afterwards. InDesign does that for us. In this last clip, I'm going to show you how to save a fixed layout EPUB from your book panel. Make sure that nothing is selected. Go to the Fly Out option and choose Export Book to EPUB. And it brings up the finder and I'm going to name it. Name my EPUB, make sure that the format is a fixed layout EPUB. I'm going to place it in the same folder as my other document and hit save. Then it brings up the EPUB fixed layout export options. At this moment, I'm going to keep everything as a default and hit OK. InDesign is exporting my document as an EPUB. And since I work on a Mac, by default, my document is going to be opened in iBooks. And, uh, and now I'm able to scroll to the pages. InDesign created me a double page spread fixed EPUB document that is ready to be sent to any e-reader. So again, I work on a Mac and by default it's going to get opened in iBooks. If you are a PC user, according to the best of my knowledge, you will need to download a third party ebook reader, but the process to save the document is exactly the same and you will be ready to send your fixed layout EPUB file to any e-reader.